Okay, guys, it's here. We have it. First off, we're going to look at this really cool wooden box. I mean, this is, uh, they put a lot of attention and detail to that box. It's pretty cool. Now, we'll open it up. We'll check out what's inside. There's been a lot of videos. Johnny Q90, uh, Steve from RC Tanks and Trucks, he has his. Um, I noticed there were some differences in my kit. I don't know why. Um, but, you know, we're going to go over it. Uh, this is a L400 block with a new upgraded bearing I've been waiting for. And they were kind enough to put it in the shipment of the truck, which was cool. And I appreciate that greatly. Sterling kit. Thank you, Mona. I have a crank coming. Now, back to the kit. We got our hood, our starter and glow plug thing in here. And our body, you know. Lexan body, pretty nice. And uh, I don't know what color I'm going to go with it yet, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> One thing I do is I do, um, you know, I'm, I'm a auto body guy, so colors are colors. I can paint it any color I want um, because the I use Sickens um, paint products at work, so. We can paint anything, any color. So that's just cool. Then we have all our cool stuff in the bag here. Um, one thing I was I really liked about this grill was it has a has a mesh in behind it, you know, to keep the the crap out, you know, because the fan brings in a lot of stuff when you're running. So that right there keeps rocks and stuff from coming in and breaking your fan blades, which is nice. Um, so far, I mean. I've been waiting for this kit to come out because this is the absolute first ever um, crawler. And crawling, we'll see. Um, you know, basher, you know, trail truck, awesome. So they they sent everything in super nice packaging. You know, everything's all organized and detailed to see you know what you need. And uh, so they're. The, the cool thing is, like, when you get your your um, propeller shafts, the hardware is already in them. So there's no digging for that. They speeded up the process quite a bit with that. And uh, they have all your, you know, organized trays with your organized stuff. So when you get to that stepping point on your directions, you know where to go. Because the direction's here. The only drawbacks that I've seen to the kit were a couple of things um, one when you pick up this and you look in here there's something missing over here three things are missing <laughs> and I looked in the uh, the schematics here and come on one there one there yeah Okay, this would be that tray with your shocks and all that jazz, okay? All the stuff's here except for the three servos. Now, these are the micro servos. Now, the kit says it does not come with a steering servo, so you have to come up with that on your own. And uh, you need a servo for your um, locking front differential, which is already assembled. Mine has the, the hardware right on it, and in the bags in here is the, um, the mounting kit for this. But the axles are nice, nice quality looking axles. You know, they're very, uh, they're very well made. There's, there's not a, you know, they're all like CNC machined, and um, there's not a lot of slag. There's not, I was right about slop in these, uh, um, you know these here but these are super tight and they look to have a really nice um, universal joint in there for your um, you know for your steering pleasure and uh, I don't know what the turning radius is I'm looking at this and it seems like it's got a normal turning radius it doesn't have like the overextended uh, for crawling um, now this is your cable for your your locking diff now this actually goes to a micro servo and one thing I did notice right off the bat was when you are trying to 
put this and lock this differential, it is extremely hard to pull on this thing. It's like, I mean, it's really hard, you know? And uh, I'll try to grab it down here. But when you're pulling on it, it doesn't want to go anywhere until you turn it just a little bit. And then the spring tension on this thing is massive inside here. And that, to me, is going to burn out a servo pretty fast. Um, because it's, those micro servos are made to move things, not hold things really, you know, heavily. And uh, so I'm going to have to look into that. But maybe that's why they didn't send any servos in the kit. Um, we'll, we'll see. But like I say, all your, your springs... Your center plates, you know, your battery plates, your steering, um, servo brackets, um, motor mounts, and axles, and your header is in here. Um, I see Johnny Q90 opened his header up because, the, the, you know, it's, a, it's an optional thing. You look in there, it's really kind of small, but, you know, the engine's not a gigantic cubic inch engine either. So, if this was on the, um, you know, the... NR200, I would say I would open them up, but being it's on this, I'm going to give this a shot. But the, it's a real nice quality part, too. It's not like a, um, a chintzy made, like if you look at the, uh, where they're made on the ends, you know, it's, it seems, everything seems really nice. And these are set at both at, at the correct angle. They're not all out of whack. They're nice, you know. And uh, I was really impressed with that header. Because believe you me, I've made headers before, and it is hard, you know, to get them sealed up and everything else. So, like I say, I'm super psyched about the kit. Now, in here is the goods, okay? Move this back. First off, this is what I noticed right off the bat. Everybody's gearbox came, and it had servos and linkage hooked to it. Mine has nothing but a bracket. It looks pretty, looks like an orphan here, you know? So I'm going to have to figure this out. I don't know why they didn't do, the, you know, why they sent those other ones. Um, it even says on the website, it shows everything with the servos on them. Um, it shows that they're already pre-adjusted. Um, you know, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it'll just be easier for me to tear the gearbox apart and see what's inside it. But here's the way it works, all right? Now, this is your, your first and reverse is... With the lever down okay so there's actually two servos that run this transmission for the three speeds and the reverse which is a genius idea i thought um so you have your first and reverse when this is down okay now the servo picks up this uh the shaft here all right now it goes into I'll turn this a little bit see if i can get it in gear a second what it does it picks the shaft up now if watch the arm when I let that down watch what that arm does see how that arm goes back into neutral it puts the gearbox back into neutral when when you when you drop that down it puts it back into neutral so it's not in locked in two gears at the same time which is really cool um, now it seems like there's some tension on this too, um, not a lot. So I think a good quality micro servo will, will work for these. Um, I have a pack of 10 coming, the Metal Gear micro servos. And uh, I'm gonna give that a shot. But it's gonna kinda delay my build. Uh, like I say, I was excited to get the kit because um, I came yesterday while I was at work I keep ran home, I got it, and I went back to work, and we were pre prepping for a blizzard, which is going on right now out there. Um, now, the second thing that I was um, noticing when I had um, emailed uh, Steve from RC Tanks and Trucks back and forth, in this whole kit here, there are no instructions on... How to set this new carburetor you see that carburetor is pretty cool single carb okay we got looks like a high-end adjustment on the top and our low-end adjustment is down below here um, and this is your fuel pump on the side here but there's no settings on this carburetor so 
um, Steve, I don't know if his was out of whack or what, but we, and as soon as I got mine, uh, I communicated with him on, um, I think I had three and a quarter turns out on the top, and on the bottom, it's like seven and a quarter turns out from bottoming out. So I don't know if those are the factory settings or not. I have no clue. Um, now, this is your water cool or your air cooled version, not the water cooled. Uh, so I have a few of these. Um, these FL, they're FSL 200s. These are pretty cool. Um, you know, with the single carb, I think, you know, this is going to be a good thing. If we know what's going to happen here, you know, how we can adjust this and how it's going to react to um, the way we run things. Now, the clutch was a big thing with me. I'm a big clutch guy. You know that. Because um, clutches are the main, this, it, without a good clutch, no matter how great the engine is or how great your gearbox is, you ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? So I thought this is a very unique setup. Um, the one thing that kind of threw me a little bit, it has a one-way bearing in here to, I guess, to keep the, the um, reverse torque from running the clutch when you're going down a hill. I guess it'll just let it run. I don't know why they did that. If anybody in the hobby knows these one-way bearings, they have problems. They don't last forever. But worst-case scenario, if this bearing did lock up, um, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. You know, I don't think I'm going to have to replace it. So, but the clutch belt is super heavy duty. This thing is like, I mean, it's nice and thick. The whole kit of this thing has really nice, thick, heavy duty parts. This is probably one of the heaviest, um, well-built kit I've ever seen. You know, I mean, the, the clutch belt has a lot of weight to it too. So you get some inertia going there. Now, the other exciting thing I seen on your clutch shoes, now I don't know if this clutch was in backwards or what, but I've seen both ways. You take the clutch off, you got your conventional flywheel with your pins and your pilot shaft. Now the pilot shaft on this one is just a short, basic nut, you know, with a small little adapter on there. And I don't know if that fits into the drive shaft or we're gonna check that right now. Let's check it right now. Okay. Here's the shaft. Nope. It's a, it's a blunt end shaft, so these just set up together like so, you know. No problemo there. But now the clutch shoes itself has shoe material on it. It's glued to the shoe. It's not just an aluminum clutch. It has nice... Um, it's almost like a uh, clutch lining or brake lining off an automobile. You look in there, you see the metal charge in there? That right there is good for gripping. And uh, now it looks like it looks like it's been glued on. So I don't know how those are going to go with the heat. I don't know how this is going to work out, but like I say, it looks like they're carved out and you see these little bumps here. It looks like they glue it in place. And it holds it in that way to keep it from ripping off, which is a pretty good idea. This is the first for a clutch. And the, like I say, I had a feeling about this kit when I first seen it. Because for one, if any, everybody remembers uh, back in the day when, uh, you know, the Hilux and the Blazing Blazer come out, um, it, was a, it was a good feeling about the future of RC. And... Uh, you know, we're getting more scale, we're getting better parts, and it's all metal, it wasn't all plastic. And this one, by far, <laughs> is the nicest machined kit I've ever seen. It's like, I have a Capo JK Max. That's a very complicated kit to work with. Um, you know, they're, they're all like two millimeter screws in that whole kit. And the, you know, it's very complex to put together, and... Well, this in here looks pretty straightforward, and they've done a lot of the assembly for you with the shocks and your your axles and stuff. It has all that together. The, the clutch stuff was already put together, um, and like I say, and the, the new carburetor, um, I'm going to have to get um, in contact with uh, Mona at Sterling Kit or Toyin to see what the, uh, what the adjustments are on this. I Like I say, just to put a little sheet in there would be cool, you know? So, but so far I'm psyched. This thing's gonna weigh 
it's going to be pretty heavy because just between the gearbox and the engine, um, we got some serious weight there. Now, the, these came in the bag with no numbers on them, so I'm thinking these here are the shift rods for my gearbox. Um, maybe they had bad servos or something. Um, maybe they ran out of servos. Um, I was going to change them out anyway, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crying in my beer on that. Um, so, at least I think I have everything that I need to, to uh, when my servos come to put it together. And I imagine they didn't, being they didn't put the servos in the hardware is in the kit, in the container boxes. And we got the fuel tank here. Now this is a fuel tank straight out of like a long time ago, but. The cool thing about this is, um, this is more, I think these come out with the airplanes back in the day. For, so when you're up there doing, you know, acrobatics in the airplane, this, if you roll this thing over, it's still going to be in the fuel, no matter what. No matter what angle you turn this, the gravity's going to pull it down with the fuel, and this, and this, uh, this filter is going to be in the fuel all the time. And... They say, I have a couple of these old tanks downstairs. Um, you know, they, I still use them, to be honest with you. And uh, so this is more of an airplane tank, helicopter tank, you know, with the, with the weight ball in it there, which is cool. And our, we got tons of stuff for the body here in the bag. Everything seemed to be here. Um, I was checking the tires out and the rims and... Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna polish these up to make them like chrome you know I, I I'm like a crow when it comes to aluminum it's got to be shiny you know they're a nice heavy one-piece wheel um, you know a lot of them have the you know the hex you can bolt in the back and everything else but these are um, these are really nice um, nice quality wheels um, and I was very excited about that because there ain't nothing worse than a crappy looking wheel and the tires alone, they, they got some stiffness to them. And I noticed the sidewall has some stiffness to it, too. It's not, they don't collapse really easy, which is good for when, you know, high speeds and turning. When you turn these things, they, they like to roll over themselves. And with uh, the thicker sidewall in the tire, and you can see inside the tire. Let's take this right out here and look inside. You can see it's got ribs in the sidewall you know for strength and i like that um those things right there are what takes a regular kit and and sends it out into the you know an awesome kit you know now and here we got all our other bags of uh hardware you know this here is the piece that i need for uh, my front lock differential it came with it um, I noticed on the website it said that that was an optional part to have um, have all this. Let me grab this here. On the website it said this was optional. So, but see this came in the kit. So hopefully, you know the parts are here. I don't remember if Steve was looking for his. I don't know if he found his. I think he did find his stuff. Um, he said it was in the kit. So. Um, Johnny Q90, um, he's got his up and running, and it's pretty cool. I like that. Steve got his up and running, and, uh, you know, like I say, so far, I like the looks of it. I like the way it handles. Um, Johnny Q90 couldn't get his in the second, third gear because of limited space, and Steve at RC Tanks and Trucks was having trouble with his shifting, and I'm kind of wondering if it might be the servo setup might be not strong enough to shift that gearbox. Maybe that's why I didn't get my servos. But now, and down and down in the here, we have our hardware. The one thing that I like about the Toyin products is when you get hardware for their, you know, to build their stuff, it's all in organized um, containers. You know, and when you're done and you get everything put together, you can either use these for spare parts or, like, I use them for, um, you know, if I'm building something and that and I tear it apart, I put it right back in here. Like, if I tear one of my L400s apart, which I've done many times, I put everything back in these containers. And uh, that way there, you it's just like you're not looking for the stuff. You don't have it in one big, one big area. Um, now, we got the 
aluminum bead locks. Now these are all like shot peened. As you can see, they have a nice, um, kind of like a metallic finish on them, you know, and they're, they're pretty cool, you know. They're nice quality. There's no, there's no slag. There's no, you know, hang up, just cut your fingers or nothing on them. They're nice and smooth. So the quality is, is outstanding. And the kit is, is an expensive kit. It's probably, I mean, it's probably one of the most expensive kits that, that, uh, I've ever bought. I'll put it that way. Uh, but what you get with this kit, there's, I see it as, uh, two things. One, it's the first crawler nitro four stroke three speed truck basically you know that hit the market um and two is the collectability of this truck i think this truck is going to be a a huge collector's item down the road um you know they they seem to have you know a lot of the companies over there seem to have followed tamaya's um legacy with you know building their um, for instance, like the HDP 407 was an exact copy of the Tamiya, um, you know, 2012 Tamiya release. You know, so it's, you know, the popularity is there. And if Tamiya doesn't want to build the stuff anymore for some reason or, you know, moving on to bigger and better things, it's cool that these companies will come up and give us a second chance for this stuff. Now, here's the frame rail on this thing. And this frame rail... It's, you know, it, it looks to be like the uh, 10th scale frame rail, but it's way longer. This thing is way longer, and I don't have a frame handy here to show you, but I'll put it this way. This thing is probably, I would say, a good four to five inches longer than a 1 tenth scale frame. Because if you take these off, you take off two and a half inches on each side, you got a 1 tenth scale frame there, you know. And it's they're very heavy duty at C channel, um, and like I say, the holes are all perfect in this thing. They're not all misstamped. And um, when if if anybody out there has had an HDP 407, and uh, you know you look at the frame on the thing, and they're very crudely stamped holes. They got like you know some of the holes ain't big enough to put the screws in, but these here are all consistent and nice. So. I'm excited for that, but other than that, um, I don't know what color, like I say, I'm going to do it, but from what I see, just the upgrades, um, like I say, with the engine, gearbox, axles, and the just the quality of this kit is, is just stunning. Um, it, to me, I was a little hesitant about the cost of the kit. But look at the size of, look at the thickness of this stuff. This is all aluminum CNC machine stuff. And it's, it's not garbage. It's not, you know, cheesy stuff. This is really high quality aluminum. And so to me, it's well worth the money. It's definitely well worth the money. And you'll probably see down the road, you know, right now, I think you can, if you look at a blazing blazer, um, you know, that's really early technology and stuff out there, but they still get anywhere from, you know, 1500 to, I've seen them as high as six grand for, you know, a Blazing Blazer kit. So, um, you know, this here just blows me away with the outstanding attention to making this thing last. Um, you know, some companies out there, they, they don't care about making things last. They just want to sell them. And this here looks like there's a lot of thought put behind each and every single part you look at. You look at that part and study it, it wasn't slammed out. It was very well thought through, very well engineered. And uh, like I say, this to me is going to be the next collector's item in the RC car hobby. Um, it's going to be awesome, you know. You probably won't be able to buy, you know, ARP diff covers or nothing, but... Who knows? Down the road, there could be... How, how can you upgrade something that's already upgraded? You know what I'm saying? Um, you can change it up a little bit. Um, you know, if they do offer, you know, some dress-up parts for it or something like that, that would be nice, you know? But, like I say, so far, I am tickled. I am impressed. 
um, I will contact um, them on the carb settings and I'm gonna ask them why I didn't get any servos with mine I uh, you know, first I was a little bummed but then the more I thought about it and uh, the more I got looking into it I like I say I was gonna change them out I don't know what servos come with the kit I don't imagine they're high quality all metal servos I imagine they're probably uh, you know a cheaper you know uh, entry-level servos for your radios and all that and from what I see speaking of radios I think you're gonna need at least a six channel for this because um, you're gonna need one for throttle um, three for that four for your steering and another channel for your um, your starting and uh, another one for your lockable front depth so that right there is six channels and uh, so be prepared for that if you buy it get at least a six channel radio and uh, you know go from there I mean if you're gonna run your light kit and all that stuff they do make splitters that you can you know split into um, this because like I say this one has the light kit with it and you know I'm just going to run a splitter off the uh, you know off the ESC harness or something to hook these up so when you turn on the, the truck the uh, lights come on and uh, very simple but it was cool that they included a light kit uh, you know that not many not many uh, you know RC car kits out there come with a light kit in there to put them in there um, I was surprised uh, like it, you know when a lot of them are hit or miss when I bought my Capo JK Max mine came with a light kit but from what I understand only the ones that were sent to America had the light kit all the ones that are sent around the rest of the world didn't have the light kit and I don't know why and there was a lot of people that questioned that um, but you know hey light kits they're not that expensive but it's nice to have them so when you are finally putting your body together for the first time you can add that stuff right in there you don't have to tear it back apart again so anyways guys like share subscribe if you want I'm gonna start building this thing um, there's so many build videos out there of these things being put together um, I probably won't film me assembling the thing um, because it's pretty straightforward if you want to see it, you can check out Steve from RC Tanks and Trucks or Johnny Q90. And I do believe there is an assembly video on Sterling Kit um, from somebody else who had put theirs together kind of in a fast motion video. Um, but, like I say, I'm happy. Um, and the blizzard hitting isn't so bad now because I can stay inside and I can fire up the um, coffee maker and I can set and start putting stuff together. And my metal servos will be here, I think, Monday or Tuesday. They say Monday, but with the storm, I'm thinking they're going to be delayed a few days. So that won't be a big deal. I can add them later, and uh, we'll go from there. So. so, like I say, guys, like, share, subscribe if you want. I'll be back with more content. Um, any twerks or anything I run into, I will... I will bring it back up and let you guys know, and uh, we'll take it from there. So stay safe, stay warm, keep RCing, and uh, this one's for DJ Medic from Spark Studio. He's uh, up in the Nova Scotia area now, so he's above me, and the snow's coming, buddy, so stay warm. He's used to it because he's from Calgary, Canada, and uh, so he's used to that stuff, so. All right, guys, take care. Later.